Hello everyone, so welcome to my live broadcast on YouTube, we are uh, doing this test transmission to see what we can do in relation to our live stream, so comment below if you are live and uh, join me and ask, put it below the comment on the chat box any questions you have you want to ask me. I'll be sharing with you this afternoon a couple of issues about um, the profession, about your studies, about how you prepare for your examination and all of those stuff. So uh, put it in the comment box and I'm going to be answering all of those for you. I want to hear from you. So put it in the comment box because I want to ask other all questions. Now one of the things that you have to understand is that um, when you are here, yeah, Enoch, I see you. Enoch, I see you. Share the video with others and then let's bring in more people to it. So comment below with all your questions that you would uh, want me to deal with, you want to ask me from any uh, aspect of your studies that you are looking at. You can comment below with your questions and I'll answer all your questions for you. Now, one of the things that you need to understand is that the um, exams that you are going to write, you must uh, be in a position to prepare well for the examination. Now, I've shared a lot of uh, videos, a lot of content on how you need to prepare for the examination. I have uh, also mentioned a couple of issues about what you must do. So we went off a little bit playing the network, so we are uh, back again. And so as I was saying, um, preparing for the examination is going to be based on um, um, how, how you are with the examination. And I was talking about study style. And I mentioned that uh, what you must know is that when it comes to studying for the examination, most of the time, most of the time, what is going to happen is that you're not going to have the opportunity or you may not uh, really be in the position that you can go through everything that you need to go through. One, one of the things is that um, someone today commented on one of my videos and the person was like, um, Ishira, uh, must I cover everything in the book or what do I do in order to um, go through what I need to go through? So what you must understand is that everybody is different. I get it. However, there are a couple of ways that you must identify yourself and be able to determine what are the best approaches that you can use to study. So maybe sometimes you can find out. When you read, then you try to recollect. So somebody can walk up, you can be walking around and try to um, call to memory whatever that you have studied. 
Or sometimes also what you can do is that you can read, if it's a reading subject you read, then you what? Rewrite what you have uh, um, read. So after reading, you rewrite everything that you have read. That is also another way that you'll be able to determine and find out about how you're, you are doing in relation to the understanding of the thing. However, definitely if it is a reading, uh, if it's a calculation subject, then the sure way to learn and to prepare for the examination is to practice a lot of questions is to practice a lot of questions now when I say practice a lot of questions what do I mean so let's say for instance you are studying financial um, reporting or financial management if you are preparing for financial reporting or financial management or better still you are preparing for any subject such as um, uh, management accounting or taxation or a subject like corporate reporting then the best way to study such subjects is to put yourself in the position to practice a lot of questions. So I share what I refer to always as the success triangle. Now on the success triangle, I divide the entire journey into three things. So when, so you're gonna be assuming that you have a triangle. Now so if you have a triangle, the first aspect is that for every course that you are studying is to understand the concepts, understand the principles, understand the fundamental ideas that underline what you are studying. So for instance, if you are studying financial reporting, there are fundamental principles on financial reporting. If you are studying corporate reporting, there are fundamental principles you need to understand. If you are studying management accounting, there are fundamental principles that you need to understand. If you are studying corporate reporting, there are fundamental principles that you need to understand. Now, what many students do is that they skip the fundamental principles and they go to the next stage, which is practicing of questions. So they rather go to practice questions without spending time to understand the fundamental principles. So let's roll back. Let's say you are studying financial reporting, okay? What are the fundamental principles in financial reporting? As far as you are studying financial reporting, one of the key things that you need to understand is in relation to the, uh, um, the accounting standards. You must understand the accounting standards. So there are fundamental accounting standards that each financial reporting student must understand, like IAS2, IAS8, IAS12, IAS 16, IAS 20, IAS 23, IAS 36, IAS 38, IAS 37, IAS 40, all right? Then IFRS 9, financial instruments. Then IFRS 15, revenue from contract with customers. Then IFRS 16, maybe leases. So when you pick each of these accounting standards, you must understand the underlying principles, <coughs> underlying concepts for each of these accounting standards. So before you even explore yourself, before you even try to solve the questions, you understand the principles. Now, if you pick every accounting standard also, there are fundamental principles under each of the accounting standards. Now, if you are just joining the broadcast, comment below with your questions that you are having, questions on how maybe you are studying, questions on a video you watch that you don't understand something that you will want me to touch on in a live broadcast like this. So just comment below with your questions. I'll be glad to get your questions and answer them for you. So put comment below with your questions and I'll be glad to answer all of them for, for you. So maybe you watch a video, you did not understand something I mentioned or something I spoke about. You can comment below with your question and I'll answer all of those questions for you. So if you are studying, if you are looking at something like accounting standards and you are looking at something such as um, IES 16, there are fundamental principles that underline IES 16. What does that mean? What should constitute the cost of an asset? How should you um, recognize assets, double entry? Then subsequent measurement of assets. You must know the issue about 
depreciation, straight line method, reducing balance method. You must know the issue in relation to revaluation of assets. If there is upward revaluation of assets, how do you do the treatment? If there is downward revaluation of assets, how do you do the treatment? All of these things are critical in order to position you so you can prepare well for the examination. All of these things are critical. So the first thing you do is understand the underlying principle for what you are studying. Now, one thing that I've realized and I've also come to know is that many students, because they have written an exam before, they've written the exam once, they attended lectures or they went for lectures and they wrote the exam once and they did not pass, the second time when they are sitting and rewriting the exams, what they do is that they will not attend lectures and they begin to solve questions. With the idea, with the mindset that, oh, I already understand this. Oh, I already know about this. Oh, I can actually do this. But one thing you must understand is that the fact that you attended lectures, the fact that you attended lectures or learned about something. Right, so many people are, 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 are not going to be attending lectures again. Now, because they, have, they think they've already attended lectures, and for that reason, they, are, uh, they already know the thing, they begin to solve questions. But you see, when you register for an exam, or you sit for an exam, and you don't pass the exams, what it means then is that you did not know something, or you did not prepare well for the exams. So if you are resitting the exams, what you must do is that you have to pretend as though you haven't studied the the thing before you have not studied the thing before so what some people do is because they have learned before they've studied before they just sit down when it is time maybe one week to exams two weeks to exams then they pick their book revise quickly and go through the same notes but that is not how you're going to pass the exams if you are going to be passing if you are going to be in the position to pass the exams then the sure way for you to pass the exams is to spend time to understand the fundamental principles for the topics or for the subject that you are learning, the fundamental principles under each of the topics that you are learning, because that is what will position you, that is what will help you so you can prepare well and pass the examination. That is what will prepare you so you can prepare well and pass the examination. If you are now joining the broadcast, Comment below with your questions. Maybe you have a question about something on strategic case study, on taxation, in financial reporting, or your study style, or maybe you watch a video, you did not understand something about it. Comment below with your video. Derek Norte, I see you. Thank you for joining the broadcast. And you can share the video so that we get uh, to a lot of people and uh, share the afternoon together. Share the afternoon together. So whatever you are studying, the first thing is you must understand the fundamental principles. You must understand the fundamental principles. Hi, Mate uh, Austin. Mate Austin, I see you. Comment below with your questions if you have some questions for me that you want me to answer for you, you want me to cover for you. I'll be very glad to answer all your questions for you. So the first thing you must do is understand the fundamental principles. Now. Right, so I'm explaining the, uh, what I call the success triangle. What you have to do as a student in order to position yourself to pass the examination. So as I mentioned, the first thing you do is understand the fundamental principles. Now, if you understand the fundamental principles, then you now go to the second stage. Now, the second stage is what I call an examination analysis document. Okay? An examination analysis document. Now, after you understand the fundamental principle, you need an examination analysis document. Now, what do we mean by examination analysis document? Now, as an examination analysis document provides you with trends in the, of the examination, areas that the examiner has been examining on over, the, uh, the, over some examination settings, and gives you a clue of key areas that the examiner will be examining on in each examination or sitting. So after you go through the fundamental principles, the next thing you do is to get an examination analysis document. Now, if you are doing ACCA, one of the good things about ACCA is that when you buy your study text, 
One thing you will see is an examination analysis. So the examination analysis lists out the areas that the examiner has been examining on, the areas, the key areas. So right from the book, right from the uh, analysis, when you flip the book that like first uh, two or three pages, uh, analysis, when you flip the book that like first uh, two or three pages, you will realize that you will see the analysis. So the analysis will now inform you, oh, okay, these are the topics that the examiner sets questions on. These are the topics that the examiner focuses on. Okay, the examiner doesn't really set questions on these areas. So I wouldn't look at it or I will not focus on it that much. So when you know that, when you understand that, then that can give you the clue, that can give you the idea about what you do in relation to that. Give me a moment. So that will give you the idea of the examination. So when you understand the fundamental principles, you get an, an analysis which gives you the details of the areas. Then from there, you come to the third step, which is what? Practicing of questions. Practicing of questions. Now, as I mentioned, many students skip the first two stages. They don't spend time understanding the fundamental principles. They don't get an examination analysis document, they are just practicing questions. Now, when you practice questions without understanding the fundamental principles, you are giving yourself a lot of headache. Now, I believe you can attest to the fact that there are times when you are solving a question and you don't understand the question, you refer to the solution, you still don't get it, you look at the question again, you look at what you have done, you look at the solution, you still don't understand, and there is a high level of disjoint, there is a high level of disconnection between the, the, what you are doing and the solution that they have presented to you. The reason why you have that kind of experience is that you are missing the first step, which is understanding the fundamental principles of the subject, understanding the fundamental principles of the topic, understanding the fundamental principles of whatever it is that you are studying. So if you want to prepare well for the examination, if you want to position yourself and be in such a position where you can understand everything that you are studying, you can uh, uh, solve the questions the way they have to be solved, then what you need to do is that you need that examination. You need to understand the fundamental concept. Then two, you need an examination analysis document. Now, if you are doing ICA Ghana, then you know that you cannot get an examination analysis document from the book because that is not available as of now. But the way you do uh, with that is up comedy one. I can see you. Hi. Hi also. If there are any questions you want me to answer, you are just joining the broadcast, you can comment below with your questions. And in case you're not subscribed to the channel also, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'll be going live for questions if you have any questions for me. So this is what I want you to understand. If you want to really prepare well, write the exams and pass the exams, then these are the things that I think you must do. One, you must understand the fundamental principles. Hello, Vera Ousu. Hello, Vera Ousu. I see you, Vera Ousu. I perform so that we can get a lot of people coming on board and assist them in this discussion because it's critical, it's important that we can reach a lot of people with this live broadcast where I answer questions. So comment below with your questions. If you have any questions that you want me to address, you want me to answer on in relation to that. So if you want to pass the exams, make sure you understand the fundamental principle. That is key. Once you understand the fundamental principle, get an examination analysis document. Now, one thing is that you can do the analysis, you can download some of the past questions and try to get a trend. But the way to make it easy on yourself is that that is why I've dedicated myself to this thing because I give out the examination analysis document to students across the country so that they can use the examination analysis documents where 
I point out the key areas that the examiner has been setting questions on. Then on top of that, I look at the areas that the examiner is likely to set the question on on the current examination sitting. So for the November 2019 examination sitting, certainly our examination analysis document is already out. It's already, uh, uh, it's ready, but I, I don't think we've sent it out yet, but it's ready. And in case you are, you want to get access to the uh, examination analysis document, you can simply or WhatsApp or call uh, our office line 050-114-9296. You can call or WhatsApp that number. I just drop it in the comment box. You can call or WhatsApp that number and join our executive remission masterclass. When you join our executive remission masterclass, that will give you access to, among other things, my full course. You get access as well to my uh, uh, revision session. You get access to our mock examination. You get access to our mock discussion session. Then also you get access to the examination analysis document so you can prepare well for the examination. Okay, Vera Owusu, you have just dropped in a question. Let me look at that. You said, my issue is internal controls and substantive uh, tests. Okay, please, I need help. Please, okay. So, what is the question really? I'll be giving you a general overview of these two items as you reframe your question so I get a better understanding of it. Now, internal control simply are the uh, measures or procedures that are put in place by an organization in order to uh, find out hi or kind Vicky. Good evening, I see you. Comment below with your questions if you have any questions and share this video on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on everywhere so we get many people to come on board. So question she said my issue is with internal control and substantive tests. If I understand you well this is about audit and assurance and uh, our advanced audit and assurance. Now so the internal controls are simply the procedures, the measures, the uh, system put designed and implemented by management of organization in order to produce information to prepare reliable financial statements. However as auditors, when we come, one of the things we do at the planning stage of the audit is to assess the internal controls. So when you go to the organization, we will be giving the internal control manual. We will query management about the internal controls. This is um, AEIOU. Then what we do is that um, what you do is that you are going to uh, understand the internal controls. They will tell you about the internal control. Then you have to test the internal controls. So we will do what we call test of controls. So this is where the auditor finds out to see if the internal controls are actually working the way they are supposed to work. Now, after the internal control does the test of uh, controls and realize the strength of the internal controls, if the internal control system are, are not uh, as they purport to be or as they are supposed to be, then it means the internal controls may be weak. If the internal controls are weak, then the auditor will undertake what we call a full substantive testing. A full substantive testing. Meaning that the auditor is going to do everything, literally. But you know in auditing, we don't do everything. We do uh, pay our judgments. We pick and choose sampling uh, and other stuff. So the auditor will do a full substantive testing. But after the auditor's understanding and testing of the uh, internal controls, when the auditor realizes that the internal control systems are strong or part of the internal control systems are strong and some part are weak, then the auditor will further take what we call test of controls or selective substantive testing. This is where the auditor is not doing a full substantive testing, but is doing what? A selective substantive testing. So with this one, the ones, the areas that the auditor has identified that they are not strong, the auditor will undertake a control measure on them to identify whether they are working uh, efficiently or whether they are working effectively. So, Vera Ousu, if uh, that is what you were uh, looking for, I think that is my understanding of your question. But if there is something specific that you want me to talk about, I could touch on it also. Vincent uh, Bosta, you are inspiring me a lot. 
the way you teach. Oh, thank, thank you very, very much, uh, Vincent Bosta. Thank you very much. I appreciate that uh, as well. I appreciate that very well that you are with us and uh, watching this live broadcast. So, Vera, that is the answer to your question. If you have any question, please put it in the comment box. The reason why I'm doing this executive discussion session is to answer your questions. It's a Q&A uh, session that I'll be doing from time to time to answer all your questions for you. My objective is that you will be in the position that you will understand what you are learning very well so that when you get to the exam hall, you will be able to write the exams with confidence, do the right thing in the exam hall, and then pass the exams in flying college. Because at the end of the day, you've got to pass the exams and you've got to become successful in the things that you are doing in relation to that. So that is your uh, the answer to your question, Vera. Any other questions, please put it in the comment box and I'll answer all of those questions for you. If you are just joining the broadcast, please comment, uh, look at the chat box there and put in your comments any question that you are, you are having, put it in the chat box and I'll be answering all of them for you. And also share the video as well online so we can reach a lot of people and help them as well. Now, in case you are just joining the broadcast, I've been discussing about the success triangle where I said that to be able to be in the best position to pass the exams you need three things that is what I, I put on the success uh, triangle um, the first thing is that you need to understand the fundamental concepts in for the subject the second thing is that you must get an examination analysis and then the third thing is that you must practice a lot of questions you must practice a lot of questions so you can be in the position of passing the examination now if you are writing maybe financial reporting one of the things that you need to understand is that under the new syllabus financial reporting has become um to some extent a bit easier because uh, partnership is no more um, high purchases is no more branch accounting is no more but the accounting standards have been increased a little bit so what it means is that you must make sure you understand all your accounting standards one of the errors i've seen a lot of people doing or one of the things i've seen a lot of people doing is that um they focus a lot on consolidation i don't know I don't know why, but they, 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 they are just burnt out for console. Every financial reporting student console, console, console. No, 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 no. And the funny thing also is that with all those burnouts, they get to the exam more and they still freak out. So the best thing in passing, the best way in passing financial reporting, and this extends as well to corporate reporting, is to first spend enough time to understand all the accounting standards. That is key. That is key. So spend time to understand all the accounting standards. IAS 2, IAS 8, IAS 12, IAS 16, IAS 20, IAS 23, IAS 36, IAS 37, IAS 38, IAS 40, IFRS 9, IFRS 5, IFRS 15, IFRS 16. All the accounting standards, spend time to understand the accounting standards very well. This is the reason. The reason why you have to spend time to understand the accounting standards is that if you are doing single entity financial statements, that is, if you are preparing and uh, other comprehensive income, other position, and the cash flow statements, when you are preparing any of these statements in the exam hall, whatever is given to you in the footnote is actually an accounting standard. Maybe you've not observed it. Maybe you've not noticed it, but whatever is presented to you is an accounting standard. So you can solve a lot of questions, but will still not uh, be in the position to prepare well in the, to, to pass the examination because it is not just about solving questions, but first, it's about understanding what? The fundamental principles. And financial reporting, corporate reporting, the background is understanding your accounting standards. So if you don't understand your accounting standards, if you have weaknesses in accounting standards, then you are going to be having a problem in financial reporting or in corporate, corporate reporting. Don't jump uh, and, and go to consolidation if you have not spent enough time to understand the financial reporting standards. 
That is why on this channel, I have a lot of videos on their accounting standards. I don't know, but almost every accounting standard, we have a video on it, on this channel. From IES 16, IES 33, IFRS 9, leases, um, uh, health for sale, and discontinued operation. Every accounting standard, I think almost every accounting standard, we have uh, uh, a video on it. But in case you are looking for something more, you want something more exclusive, you really want to have a detailed understanding of the accounting standard, and you want me to assist you well on that personal level, I have, we also have the courses available online, and you can stay from anywhere at any time. So all you will do is, you visit www.ishrapremiumuniversity.com slash courses, you will find the link in the description box of, of this video, so that this, in the description box, the link is there, you click on it, then all the accounting standards, carefully treated, all the accounting standards, we've practiced a lot of questions, and get, gradually go through that, because if you gradually or carefully go through the accounting standards, then you won't have problem under single entity, then you won't have problem under consolidated financial statements. So if you're writing financial reporting and corporate reporting, that is what I believe you must do in relation to increasing your chances of passing the examination. Then you are writing a subject like audit and assurance, like um, Vera uh, Owusu, Vera Owusu. If you're writing audit and assurance, there are key areas that you have to focus on in order to increase your chances of passing the examination. So if you're writing audit and assurance, Vera, for instance, there are key areas you have to focus on. Now, what are the key areas? From next week, I'll be holding a live broadcast like this, and I'll be sharing with you the examination analysis document on the key areas that you have to focus on examination. If you're writing with an assurance, definitely there is going to be a question on um, audits and uh, audit procedure. Definitely there is going to be a question. So it, the audit, proce audit procedure could be about uh, internal controls. The audit procedure could be about trade receivables, trade payables, inventories, um, cash, bank, okay? All those things. Definitely there will be a question under that. There will be a question under that. So the examiner may bring you an extra scenario, then he will ask you how will you audit this or he will ask you what procedure do you undertake to check these things. Now, if you are writing out audit procedures, then you have to ask yourself what accession is being tested. And there are a lot of assertions that can be tested. We, uh, I usually use what I call the ACCA cover, and that is a NEMO, okay? ACCA cover, that is a NEMO. Where you are talking about accuracy, you are talking about cutoff, you are talking about completeness, you are talking about allocation, you are talking about um, occurrence, all of those things. So before any kind of thing that you are writing audit procedure for, you must ask yourself what kind of assertion that is being tested because that is what will guide you in order to be able to write out your audit procedure. So certainly in every audit assurance, you are certainly going to be having a question on audit evidence because that is fundamental, that is critical to the examination. So you're going to be having a question on audit evidence. Now when it comes to audit evidence, you know that audit, uh, the auditor must obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence. When we say sufficient, we mean enough evidence. Evidence that will be able to help us to reach a reasonable conclusion. When we say appropriate evidence, it means that we should be able to have the relevant evidence that we need in order to what? issue our uh, uh, auditor's report. Then certainly there will be a question on reporting. Uh, when you are doing audits, there will certainly be a question on what? Reporting. Then there will certainly be a question on audit planning. Audit planning audit planning and audit procedure, there will certainly be a question on that. Risk assessment, just joining, please have it in relation to that for you. So, what am I saying then? What I am saying, you need to do. What I need, number two, you must get an examination analysis document. Number three, you must practice to uh, prepare well for the examination and ultimately pass the examination because at the end of the day, it's not just about writing the examination, but a lot of people have written some tries about the fact maybe you are not doing the right thing. I get it. Maybe you are not doing the right thing. So this goes back to the concept. You see, some, some of you, you are not being serious about studies. 
As I'm talking to you, some of you, you are not really burning out. Some of you, you are not really putting in the effort. But you are waiting two weeks to the exams, one week to the exams, then you start working hard. But it doesn't work that way because when you do that, you are putting a lot of pressure on your mind and you cannot absorb as much as you need. Because when you do that, you are doing what we call chew and pour, or you are, you are chewing baba to go and reproduce. But there are some papers you can chew baba and maybe it can work for you. But if it's a calculation paper, you can't chew baba for financial reporting. You can't chew baba for corporate reporting. You can't chew baba for management accounting. You can't chew baba for financial management. You can't chew baba for taxation. You must understand the fundamental principles and practice a lot of questions. That is what you have to understand. That is what you have to understand. So I believe that in order to prepare well and position yourself in such a way that you will be able to understand the examination and pass the exams very well, these are the things that you have to do in relation to that. So the success triangle is there. Now I have it also on the channel later on. You can check through uh, my playlist. I think it should be under how to use you will get the success triangle there and really get the details explanation on that as as well now if you are writing strategic case study if you are writing strategic case study there are a couple of developments that you have to understand and one thing you must know is that you have to make sure you continue to stay with me subscribe to my channel and join my uh, uh, live broadcast because during this live broadcast I'll be mentioning a lot of things and talking about a lot of issues so when it comes to um, strategic case study, if you are writing strategic case study, there are a couple of things that you need to understand for strategic case study. There are a couple of things that you need to understand. Number one is that um, the case study, you know we're going to be having pre-seen information and then the unseen information. Now the pre-seen information is going to be out two weeks before the examination. So if you're writing strategic case study, your pre scene will be out two weeks before the examination. However, there are a couple of things that you must understand, a couple of things that you must position yourself in. In case you don't know, your strategic case study exams is going to be based on four key areas. Number one has to do with strategic management issues. Now, what are these strategic management issues? These strategic management issues are about um, environmental analysis, international um, environmental analysis, both the internal environment, external environment, competitive or industrial environment, the international environment, then various strategic modules, like the Porter's uh, uh, strategy, like the strategic clock, Porter's generic, Porter's uh, diamond, okay, value chain analysis, SWOT analysis, those key modules, all of those things are structured under strategic management issues, and that is 40% of the syllabus. Now, again, in case you just joined the broadcast, if you have any question, please put it in the chat box and I will answer all of your questions for you. And please share the video with others so that we can reach a lot of people and help them to have their understanding. Mohammed Nazif, you are asking a question, so let me look at that and answer that for you. Please will, please will the past questions of the previous management accounting be helpful to the introduction to management accounting? Yeah, to some extent, yes, but you have to exercise a high level of discretion. So, Mohammed, to some extent, you have to exercise a high level of discretion. The reason is that um, the introduction to management accounting, uh, it is not everything there that is in the management accounting previously, because previously the previous management accounting was splitted into two. So when you are going to, if you are going to use the past questions under the previous syllabus for introduction to management accounting, use it in line with the uh, with the syllabus, because. There are a couple of topics that you won't see in the management accounting past questions under the old syllabus, like uh, time series, okay? And then probably I think time value of money, if my memory serves me right, you may not see those things there properly, okay? Then you may not see more questions also on accounting for material, accounting for labor, uh, FIFO, LIFO, simple average, weighted average, under the 
previous examination sitting. That is a just ended examination sitting. You may not uh, find questions like that. So if you are going to be relying on that as your guide, then you have to use the syllabus to set the pace for you in relation to that. Nonetheless, to some extent, it's going to be helpful because you have budgeting there, you have various analysis there, you have the profit statement there, marginal costing, absorption costing there, then you have some few about um, you must exercise a high level of in relation to using that in for your examination. So that is what you must understand about that. Mohammed uh, Nasib Suleimana. Mohammed Nasib Suleimana. I believe that I answered your question for you. Comment below and let me know if uh, uh, I truly answered the question for you in the way you want it to be answered. Now, so that is uh, Nasib's question. If you have any question, please put it in the comment box. I will answer all of your questions for you. If you have any questions, please put it in the comment box and I'll answer all of the questions for you. Now, I was talking about strategic case study before Nasib's uh, question came in. So as I was mentioning, you will be going to be having a pre-seen and unseen information. Now, the strategic, the entire strategic case study is going to be based on four key areas, as I mentioned. You're going to have strategic management issues, that is 40%. You're going to have business plans. Now, as I mentioned earlier in, in, in another video when I was giving you an overview of uh, strategic case study, the business plan here is not about the business plan you know that the business plan we prepare for organization. But this goes beyond that and uh, it looks at other key areas. That's 20%. Then we come to financial objectives and strategies. This is why we've been looking at issues such as um, uh, investment appraisal, forex exchange rates, cash budget. This is the millionaire booklet. How to get super rich. In relation to that. For you, to get super rich. Uh, uh, straight, straight. Have you seen me? No, no, no. Look, here, up, the, the story building, I just sent the filling station. I just sent the filling station. No, 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 here. Okay, so you can come here.